Hey, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of The Overlay, a poker podcast brought to you by Paramount Social Club, beautiful Houston, Texas. Hey, Houston peeps. And CCG Poker in the cool, cold, windy city of Chicago. My voice is cracking like a 12-year-old. This is Ken, your hostess with the mostest, joined today by my favorite co-host, co-producer, co-founder, co-everything, Co-life. Co life, co-life life partners. Co. I'll tell you a funny life partner joke here in a second, everybody. But uh, Brandon, Brandon, what's up, man? What up? It's 2022 after the it's last cold. time. Cold, windy Chicago oh is my the most God, accurate description you can so get. so cold. It went from like zero to 60. Actually, it went from 60 to zero. Yeah, I was about to say, you did that wrong. <clears throat> I felt like I mean, it was... It just turned into winter, like boom. Yeah, like it was fine. It was like... Thanksgiving was cool. We did the Black Friday events, both in, in Texas and in Illinois, both very, very busy. And I'm very excited about the fact that they were busy. I didn't know really how they were going to go considering, you know, everything that go, it's going on. It is what it is. You know, they were still very busy. Um, <clears throat> and then we did the WSOP stuff, which was super awesome. Our most popular most downloaded episodes pretty much of all time is your three-part story of your main event run, which congratulations on again. Thank you. You're welcome. And then uh, now we're up to 22. 2022 is the year. What's up? Hey, 22. Man. Came quick. Came quick. Came quick. I feel like we were just talking about how we are stuck in quarantine in uh, April 2020. That was like and now here we are two years ago. It's crazy. And back to the Black Friday stuff, it is just nerve-wracking. You know, you spend 10, 12 years building up an event, and then 2021 it, or 2020, it just gets taken from you. Yep. And then you just have no idea. I mean, we went into that kind of blind. Like, I'd be happy if there's 200 people, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was 500. Right. You know, it's like... <clears throat> and what do we end up with? Like 400 in Chicago? Yeah, it actually ended up working up. It was a little bit... It was different. There was a lot of new people that just rolled in at 215 yeah. thinking that it was any other event. Right. And then they got lucky that it was a little bit slower for a Black Friday that they were just able to, oh, wow, you guys have 30 tables in this? Correct. Yeah, we do. And there's immediate seating. You're lucky. Yeah. What do we get up and to? So, like 405 or something? A little over 400? Yeah, it was like four, 415. Yeah. And I think the ability of everybody to know that there was an immediate seat kind of worked to the advantage of the tournament yeah for sure because <clears throat> no you know it's like when we you know you guys that have listened to our podcast we talk about this when when we had 50 person events you know back during the height of covid um you know we'd have a deep stack and there'd be 20 people on the list well you know we that would make people play tighter because they knew it was their only bullet even there was five levels sure. of late wrench they aren't well this was the reverse normally the 20 dollar early bird on black friday you're waiting in a, in a 15 to 30 minute line if you bust. Right. So people play tighter. They're like, wow, this is the biggest tournament of the year. I don't want to just get these chips in. Well, now they see 15 seats open and it's pew, 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 ace four suited. I'm in there. Everybody's gambling. We're all in. There's no line. It's $25 to rebuy. People get crazy. Yeah. And, and then, you know, it ended up being great. And I think that there was a whole new line of people that realize, oh, wow, it's this busy? Yep, every Black Friday. So then you build on that, and it's only... It'll start you know, over next, again. And yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll go over. back to that idea of, like, <clears throat> you know... Self-fulfilling. Correct, yeah. It's kind of, kind of crazy. Um, I'm trying to look and see what the... Bum, 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 the Black Friday in Houston was actually one of their biggest... They did a $2,500 guarantee. Normally, the guarantee for the Houston early bird is $1,000. And they get like three to four tables. I think they end up with like six or seven. So almost double what it normally is. So that was pretty cool. And for the first time ever, yeah, we never, ran down Never really south, done a, a, a big big bird down there on Black Friday. So I think that's going to be a reoccurring thing. So it's kind of awesome and, uh, and exciting. But talking about how your play changes uh, from one tournament to another, depending on if you have to wait for a seat or if there's a line, kind of brings us to our topic of episode 59, which is what we're on today. First episode of 2022. Um, what are we calling it? Poker goals or poker resolutions? How to be a better player in 2022? Yeah, I, I said clicking the reset button, but you know. No, all just, of that works. Yeah, they're all good. You know, and just um, a segue, you know, we probably should have 
improved our 2022 and came up with the title before we're seven minutes in the interview right. or seven minutes into the episode. You but, so. you know, so we aren't really, you know, do That's, as we say, not as we do. That wasn't one of our resolutions was to, no, no, was no, to no. produce a better podcast. List. Oh, before we get too far into it, I want to make sure we get one more shout out. Brandon and I, finally, your handsome Ken. And your most wonderful brand, in which nobody knows who what your face looks like down there yet. Um, That's great. I, I do have a face for radio, so a face for podcasting. That's the way new people say it now. Um, right. We are going to do our first official meetup game in Texas on Tuesday. Uh, today is Thursday, so Tuesday is going to be what four days away, five days away, whatever the case may be. Do you know what the date is? What's five days away. At? Seems right. Um, but the, uh, Tuesday I'm checking the date right now and I'm stuttering like a monkey Tuesday, the 11th, January 11th, Brandon and I are both going to be in Houston at Paramount social club doing a PLO meetup game. Cause we both love PLO. So last week I was there, I did a kind of impromptu game. I just sent out some text and got a game off, which was great. Super juicy game, a little quiet to start off with, but as the PLO juices got flowing, it got really, really juicy or good whatever the case may be so that was fun and then we're going to do it again next week so i think next week we'll have at least two maybe three tables um they still had two other games going of round of each on uh tuesday night there at paramount but uh it was awesome it was super fun and it's a really good group uh that i got going for that game so i'm excited to kind of hang out with it. and i can't wait for them to meet brandon and uh truly experience a uh you know a wild plo game so look forward to your first texas experience brandon I feel like I have to, you know, play a little looser now. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't play any looser. Or, like, me. they, I can't really hide. You know, they're going to make me play. It's not like yeah. I'm going to have to drive the splash action. around. Great. No, no. The action is driven there by so many people. But That's great. Um, back to the episode 59. Uh, really, I think what we want to talk about today is, is the idea of how to plan, execute, and kind of stick to your 2022 poker resolutions, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, and th- those poker resolutions and life resolutions sometimes intermingle when you're playing poker a lot. You know, yeah. it goes beyond just like, oh, I want to make sure I fold King Jack under the gun every time. Like we're going beyond that. Like, in, you know, we're talking more. Mm, what's the word I'm looking for? Broad. Specific. Okay, I guess that's the opposite, opposite of what I said. <laughs> is that right. is, that's hilarious. You want to make it yeah. more general themes. Uh, my idea is, is the opposite because I'm always pretty good about the general stuff and I'm not very good at the specifics. Like I would oh, never have great, a resolution. I'm the opposite. Yeah, I would never have a resolution that says I am never going to four bet uh, a suited connector um, in position for the rest of the year because I love doing that because I just want to build a big ass pot and I've got six, seven, eight, nine single suited and I was like, Screw it. I just want to play a big pot. I have no idea what the flop's going to be. I should really just call here because I'm building a big-ass pot that I might actually get bet out of pre-flop or I'm just dedicating my whole stack with no idea what the flop's going to be. Like, I should really wait to see if I can actually... Because, like, middle cards in PLO are great as long as you get middle po- cards on the board. Like, people always freak out. Um, it's funny. It's one of our most popular episodes from last year um, is just PLO in general is the idea of... It's such a flop driven game. So I've already commandeered this part of the the podcast. But like for me, I'm always trying to create these big pots because I want to do the Johnny Draws action of build a pot, catch a hand. But my resolution this year is to play a little smarter where I don't put all this money in pre flop and then completely whiff the flop and then go, well, shit, (laughs) that was a waste of $400, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We all do it, though. We all do it. I don't need to drive up the action. Do it less. Do it less. Do it less or do it in better spots. Maybe that's a better idea. Why don't we do this? Why don't you give us some of your examples of how you're hitting the reset button for 2022? What are your goals this year, Brando, general and specific? Give us a little rundown of what like yours is like a semi pro poker player. You take it far more serious than I do. So I want to get an idea of what what are your resolutions for this year or goals or whatever we're calling it. You know, I've kind of removed from my playing poker weekly, and it, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it's because the horseshoe's not open, and the horseshoes used was my home. Like that was my baby. Like I was, I spent thirty hours in that casino for two years straight, thirty hours a week in that casino for two years straight. And, um, you know, I tried to build this system of like 
you know, making sure I'm eating healthy and making sure that, you know, I made a rule with my buddy I would always go with that. Like, we would have to go to the gym before we went to the casino every day. Like, no exceptions. And, like, he had a strict rule where he's like, I'm not going to eat casino food. Like, I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm either bring something or eat dinner and then go. You know, I think just, like, small little improvements to where you're not just, like, blindly waking up at noon and like driving through McDonald's on your way to the horseshoe, drinking a pop and then smoking a joint, walking into the place, right. you know, just like, and, and it's, you know, poker players. You know, I, when I was a 25 year old or 23 year old kid, that's exactly what I did. I woke up at noon at my parents' house said, Hey guys, I'm going to horseshoe, drove through a fast food place, got some food, yep. went there, drank beer. Oh my smoked, God smoked whatever didn't drink any water ate whatever pizza or buffet or whatever yep. god knows whatever yep. junky food they have there yep. and i'm like no wonder why i lost you know right. and then i would go bust every three weeks and one two hold them i'm like what am i doing wrong i'm so way better than these people i think the idea there is that there is a balance between i mean really any anything you take seriously you also have to take serious the, the sense of your body, right? Like for right, me, your for, body and your mind. Correct. Is Cause so like, underrated. I talked to people about that. Cause I'm no expert in poker when it comes to that. I'm the perfect recreational player. I do want to drink. I do want to goof off. I'm not doing this for a living. I'm never going to do it for a living. I'm not good enough. But on the flip side for golf, I do take golf very seriously. I still play in some amateur events. Most of them are 25 and older. They call mid am events, which I honestly feel like we should have mid am events for poker. That would be a super cool, like, because I don't want the young kids in there that are like all young guns proving themselves. I want like the old guys to play so I can know how old guys play. But right. the uh, guys that were young 15 years ago when you were young. Correct. So like for me <laughs> playing in the old guy tournaments, 25 and up for golf, you get rid of all the college kids and all the really good young guns. It's guys that are not playing golf professionally for a living. We're all amateurs, but we want to take it seriously. And, and it's a great group of people to play with. And the, the age ranges are, you know, most of them are in their 30s and 40s, right? Like you get some younger right. kids, but the younger kids, if you're 25, 26, they still want to play in the big events, not not the older guy events. So anyways, I started taking it more seriously last year. I'm like, well, if I'm really going to do this, like I can't just work the CCG event until two o'clock in the morning, go home, get four hours of sleep, turn around, try to tee off with no range prime, no breakfast, nothing but a ro uh, rock star or Red Bull in the morning or five cups of coffee and then expect to play well. You can't, you can't, ex if you want to do that, that's fine. And I could probably have done that in my early twenties when I was doing it every day and my body was in better shape, but like 40 year old me, I, I can't walk. 36 holes on four hours of sleep. My legs and my body physically cannot do it. I can't stay focused for that amount of time. So it's like all of the, those things that kind of transfer over, I think everybody should have a really good goal for 2022 of being, hey, taking your body and your you know th th that health factor, especially now with COVID and all the stuff that we've thought about for the last two years, like health wise and like stuff that we should be doing to be healthier. So we're more, you know, or less likely to get sick, right? Because I mean, if you're in good shape, you're less likely to get sick. Um, I think that's an important goal for everybody to have. Just better mental and physical health will help you play better in whatever game or hobby you want to be a part of. For us, it's it's poker. Yeah, no, I read like a couple self improvement books, and they're just like you know, just get one percent better, like get a little tiny bit better every day, and the consistency it'll add up, like. It's one of those things where you go to the gym one day and you look in the mirror and nothing happens. And then you go to the gym five days and you look in the mirror and still nothing, nothing happens. Yeah. And like, it's one of those things where nothing happens unless you go to the gym 20 minutes a day, six days a week for eight months. And all of a sudden you wake up and you know, you whatever. notice it, you, you, you notice it all of a sudden one day kind of clicks and, and it takes that whole entire grind of the six months to get those results, and that's why so many people fail because they, they want the instant gratification of it's like, impossible oh, I went that. to the gym, right. and now I should have muscles. Well, that's not the way it works. It's like you said, you hit the reset button. It's like, cool, hit the reset button on my poker stats, so now I'm cool. I don't have to worry about anything. I can just do whatever I want. My bankroll is what it is and go from there. But you know, it's funny because – that gym you know, uh, analogy is so good because everybody does it, right? Like we expect it just to happen immediately. That doesn't happen. Like you got to give it some time to start. It's funny. I was reading an article about uh, poker resolutions and how you should have 
uh, primary goals, and then you should also have like a secondary goal. So it's more along the lines of like when the primary goals kind of fail because you didn't give it enough time or you stopped doing it to have a secondary goal as well. Maybe a little bit easier goal, maybe something a little bit um, more attainable so you still feel good about your resolutions. Right, like playing, like, I mean, for instance, it would be like, oh, to win a bracelet or right. to win a, a primary or win a, a big, big prestigious event. poker tournament. That could be your your primary goal. But your secondary goal might be like play 50 tournaments of a thousand right. times or more. So it's like even if you brick on that, you, you still like hit your goal of, of you know, your Trying minimum amount of tournaments sure. you wanted to play. Did you say or, or something along those lines? I'm just, I'm just throwing out random like numbers. one a week, bro. That's well, a you lot. Know, people. People that listen are poker pros, man. I, I mean, guess. you get you get Jordan in a in a series, and he's firing seven bullets in in each tournament. He hits his fifty in a weekend. Yeah, he's like Sal in the action Jackson. He's got to get first and second place to break even in the rebuy ter- part of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, in, in all reality, I just feel like you know I don't really believe in New Year's in terms of like oh it's a new me like oh right. no it's the next it's the next year it's the same shit you're gonna wake up the next right. day and and you're the same person but no I difference between ex- December to January excuse. right it's Guys. an excuse to be able to like set something new because I always you know with me and dieting like I always set I always give excuses like in my mind I'm like well you know if I start this two month training I mean I'm never gonna be able to do it because I'm going to Vegas for March Madness and that's 41 days away so I might as well just start after that right. and then I'm like well I come home for March Madness and you know it's my birthday in a month and and then you know it's just like I always have some excuses and I feel like January 1 there's kind of no excuses like at least for me, I got nothing going on the next whatever two or three months of my life. Like you can you can start whatever you want. Like the small little baby steps are good enough. If you just say like every time I go play poker, I'm only going to drink water. Or Ooh, you know, wow, that would be tough for me, and that would be good one for me because I do drink a lot of sh- not sugary right. drinks. I, but... I sit down at the poker table and I'm like Diet Coke, please Diet Coke yep. with lemon, Diet Coke with lemon. Every time she comes <clears throat> around, finally she brings me a 32 ounce gulper because I've. <laughs> I've gone She's through tired so of running back and months. forth. She's tired of running back and forth. So, oh, that's you know, great. just little tiny baby steps where you might not even notice it until October that, you know, you actually benefited. But, you know, in the back of your mind that, like, every time you order a Diet Coke, it's definitely healthier to order a water. But you just, you know, you just self-consciously order, not self-consciously, you just, without even thinking about it, you order, order Diet Coke because that's what you do. But maybe if you just step back, think for a second, all right, I'm going to drink 10 of these 10 ounce bottles of water every time I go to the ocean. Right. There you, go. you got your whole daily water of 100 ounces in there. I mean, that's a huge accomplishment if you can do that for an entire year. And, and not that it's easy, but like it's attainable, right? Like it's something that you can be in control of, which I think is good. It's also tough when you're talking about like a poker goal and, and it being like, oh, I want to grow my bankroll, or I want to play these many tournaments, or I want to win a bracelet. There's so many factors that are outside of your control that you can't, obviously you can't control. It, it makes the goals a lot harder to try to think about them. What other personal right. goals do you personally have? I mean, have you thought about them? Or, you know, yeah, no, I mean, like, do you they're, have mostly specific? Like health, they're mostly health-related. They're not really right. poker-related. Like, you know, I, I try to get 10,000 steps in a day every single day. Oof. And I mean, if that means I'm at the horseshoe and I have 7,000 steps and it's 10 o'clock, you well, walking time around. To take a, time to take a trip to the sports book. Go up those two flights of stairs. Walk around by the buffet down the back end. You know, taking a walk around, maybe throwing a hundred in a slot machine, which is another one of my. <laughs> it's another you know, one. Yep. Right. But you know, it's just the small stuff like that where you know you're in control of it. And you really have no excuses. Like, especially with me, I have no kids. I live by myself. You know, I obviously have obligations, but you know, when I work on the weekends, I, I used to tell myself. You know, oh, there's no way I can go out for a walk or, or get on the Peloton before work on Friday. Well, I don't have to be at work till one o'clock. Right. What's stopping me from waking up at ten? Physically, or nine I could do it. And getting out there for an hour. Oh, well, then it's too cold. It's winter. Yep. And, you know, what I mean, there's always, you know, just so that's those are a few of my goals. Is you know, the gallon of water and the ten thousand steps. And and you know, you people that are listening are like, well, that doesn't have anything to do with poker, but it really does. Yeah. It like. I can't control how many races I'm going to win. I can't control what I, you know, I can't control how many times I'm going to get Kings versus aces. I can't control any of those things. What you can control is how you react to those things. And, you know, your mindset of, you know, clean, 
a clean mind. And how do you get a clean mind? Well, you know, you exercise and you drink water and you eat a healthy diet. And I don't ever eat after 8 p.m. And I'm sticking to that for as long as I can. I've been doing it since the day after Christmas. I know that's like 11 days, but like I've already seen the results on the scale. And it's, it's got to start crazy. somewhere. Like, and, and, you know, like all of a sudden I'm on day 12 and, you know, going to sleep hungry is, you know, I don't need to make this about a diet, but going to sleep hungry is one of the worst feelings in the world. It really is. I mean, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm laying there in bed. I'm like, man, I can totally go out and eat some right. insert secret craving that you have. But, you know, you just don't do it. You go to sleep. And then now eventually, you know, I'm two weeks into this. Now it's, it's midnight. I'm laying in bed. I'm like, you know, I'm not that hungry. It's fine. I'll it's look forward to bad. breakfast. It's not that bad. And I know it's doing something, you know, even if you don't see it on the scale, but like, you know, your mind's clear. And then, you know, when I was playing in the WSOP, I saw all these people with these meticulous regimens of like, man, everybody that looks like a poker pro is also doing something that poker pros should be doing. You know, the, I, I don't mean to sound, you know, like the, the fat 350 pound old guy with the beard and that refuses to wear his mask is in the lounge drinking a Coke on break. The 23-year-old right. kid with, uh, you know, Gucci backpack and uh, Rolex, uh, he's doing push-ups on the side or drinking water or doing some stretches or, you know, just like stupid, crazy things that people think he's dumb, but, like, he's actually not. Like, we're the dumb ones for drinking a Coke in the in the lobby, right. making fun of him while he's trying to ship the $9 million for first place. For sure. Well, we're going to run out of steam on day four, tired. He's like, I'm just getting started. You know, those are obviously very macro goals to have set into life. But if you're going to go to a tournament or spend a weekend at a circuit event or go to the WSOP, have something in place. Whatever that is, just have something and do it, even if it's not going to mean anything for the week you're there. Just so you can, like, you know, say you were in that mindset. Don't blame don't blame the mindset for your failures. Blame the, blame the dealer. <laughs> Blame the dealer. <laughs> you know, you know, better blame the dealer than yourself. No, hundred percent. Yeah, you got to blame the dealer. I mean, how about you? Do you have anything set in stone for twenty twenty two? I do. I, mean, I don't really have any hours <clears throat> goals or goals like that because I'm no. Not really... I have two kind of that I've thought about. At least I've I've, I've I plan to do. Um, I played my first session. It was on Tuesday uh, at Paramount uh, in the PLO game. Um, it was a one two five game, which kind of seems to be my comfort level game. Um, we did a 100 to 2K buy-in, uh, but most nice. people were buying in for a little bit less. I don't know if they didn't know that the buy-in was that high, but I didn't have any big 2K buy-ins. Everybody was buying in for like, you know, between like five, yeah, I was gonna say like between 500 and a thousand, uh, you know, a couple yeah. 400. So yeah, four to 800 was pretty norm. So I bought in for 1K. So I was like, I like, I like, I like buying in where I feel like I can get the maximum amount of my chips uh, on a winner. And I don't want to ever feel like I'm playing short stacked because I do have a tendency to do that when I feel like I'm getting down, you know, if my thousand turns into like four or 500, I feel like my tactics change and I don't call on draws or bet my draws because I'm worried about having to rebuy or at least it's subconsciously, it's something I do. So I'm trying not to do that. But anyways, I bought so in. Can I really, can I yeah, go ahead. really quick? Just, I think for anybody that struggles with that and I used to struggle with that and like I actually had a full, you know, long conversation with my buddy who you know, is kind of like well, we we went to the North horseshoe together for two years we we swapped some action i mean we we talked about hands kind of your we mentor and talked about the mental game and we talked about you know just if 500 is the amount where you're going to switch your game plan then just top up 200 like get back to set get, get back to the minimum where you're going right. to get out of that mindset. I like it. That. It costs you 200 out of your pocket. It's not ruining. You're like, oh, I only brought three thousand to play. You know, just plopping all your money on the table. But that that little two hundred add on goes a long way in switching your mentality, which means that now you're going to be playing like you have a thousand as opposed to like you have three hundred. So that's that's something I need to do because I'm that exact person. Because I'm like, pull, and then right. I'll, or I'll get even worse. I'll get down to like three hundred. And then I'll go, all right, well, now I'm in the all-in mode. I just want to get it all in with some kind of draw or whatever and try to double or triple up and get back to even when in yeah, reality, that's, bad. that's, bad. that's, that's bad. bad. That's bad play. So I guess my new number one goal now that we've talked about that is to do that kind just of top. 
that if you're down stack. to 300 and you're going to jam, just add 400 more. Yeah, that's like, so much better than gambling on your 300 breaking and then pulling out another thousand. Right, it's kind of like stack size, like management. Is that a word? Right, or like stack size mentality. There, yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah. better. Stack mentality. size. Yeah, it's just like being aware of my stack and kind of what's going on because my game completely changes because I do the opposite. I'll call more stuff that I probably shouldn't be calling because I'm up and I'm just like, man, whatever, let the run good, run good. Like I got a nut flush draw and a gutter ball and a bottom pair. Like I probably, I only talk about PLO guys. So if, if, if you hear me say <laughs> stuff and you're like, how does that apply to no limit? It doesn't because Ken doesn't think in no limits in my brain. I don't think in pictures, numbers or color. I only think of four cards. Like when you say aces, my immediate thought is, well, what are the other two cards? That he's what are the other at? two cards? Right. Because I understand you have aces, but what are they with? Like, I don't care about just two cards. <laughs> I'm a four card brain thinker. But uh, before Brandon so uh, eloquently told me that my stack size mentality needs to change, uh, which it does. Well, you knew it needs to change. It's true. My other goal for 22 is that I want to actually get better at record keeping because I only remember my winners. I never remember the losers. So I never have an idea if I'm a winning or losing player, maybe because I don't want to know. But I really kind of do. I'm a 100% recreational player. I enjoy the game. I like to play. I'm not going to say I don't care if I win or lose because I absolutely do care if I win or lose. And anybody who's played with me more than once will realize when I'm winning and when I'm losing, I'm a completely Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde of poker. Brandon? Uh, I can agree. Yeah. Like I'm either super fun and having a great time or I am a miserable, no talking. Yep. There really is no in between. Yeah. Uh, The only way he's in between is when he sits down at the table and hasn't played a hand yet. (laughs) Because I'm trying to feel at the table. Do I want to be super fun? It's going to go one way or the other real quick. Or do I want to be goofy Ken or do I want to be quiet and stoic Ken who's pissed the whole time and unhappy that I'm playing? So I'm trying to get away from that. But yeah, really for me, my goals are, I guess, now threefold. One, Keep better records of just simply, I wrote down in a note on my phone, I'm not doing an app or any of that shit or a game, hours logged. I don't care about that. I want to just have a running total. I bought it for a thousand bucks. I moved it up and down and I am cashing out for 550. So I lost $450 on Tuesday playing in the PLO game at Paramount, which was fine. I just literally wrote one, four, one, five, 22 minus 450. And then next time I play, which will be this coming Tuesday at Paramount again, Hey, uh, hopefully I have a winner and I can offset those. So that's my goal. Um, Stack size mentality. I'm going to work on that because I like that idea, Brando. Not crazy about the health stuff. I don't want to do that yet. So I'm going to skip that. I'm still going to eat cookies and hang out uh, while I'm playing. Yeah. Uh, My over like generic goal is the idea of I want to play the main event this year. I've been dying to play the main event for like the last two years and I really didn't Maybe catch three years. Really? Yeah. I didn't catch the main event bug really until kind of COVID put that on the backstop. So I want to, I want to play in the main event this year in Vegas and enjoy it. Even though I'll never experience it at the Rio, I'm going to have to start it out at, at Bally's, but Hey, whatever. I like Bally's is a better spot on the strip. It's right next to where I like to stay. Yeah, no, it's kind of one of those bucket list it's kind of like life-changing in its own way i don't play tournament poker i don't really go to the wsop and then all of a sudden now it's like man i'm addicted to it obviously it helps that i kind of ran good ran kind of deep in cash but think about it this way too it's kind of like the world series of poker for poker players is so hear me out it's attainable in the sense that you can actually go and sign up and play. Imagine if you were like me, uh, it would be it would be like trying to play in the Masters. I'm never going to have the chance to play in the Masters. Never. Never in a million years am I ever going to be able to play. It's never going to happen. I've, I've accepted that at 41 years old. I'm never going to play in the Masters. It's just not going to happen. However, I can go play in the upper echelon, most dramatic and fun and biggest poker tournament in the world. I can go and play in and play with the Tiger Woods of poker. That's amazing. That's so cool. That's what I like about it. So even if you just punt the 10K, which I don't want to do, um, that would be pretty awesome to to be able to see and do. So I'm excited. I mean, about if that. I didn't win, if I didn't win that race and was out on day one, like I still think I'd be like, man, I gotta go play this next year. It was awesome. Like the one thing I took away was like it was day four, and we're playing for tens of thousands of dollars, and everybody was still just like having a good time. 
Yeah. Like, you, poker gets such a bad rep for, like, oh, slow, boring to watch. You know, everybody's yep. just a robot. And sure, those people exist in that 100%. tournament all over the place. But the general feeling was, like, people talking. Oh, what'd you have there? Oh, having fun. Show us a bluff one time. Like, man, that's a sick play. Like, just, like, the camaraderie was just, like, you're not. It was more like I'm playing a 120 at CCG right. than a 10K. Yep. And, and that was really cool because... Every 1600 I played at the HPT at Ameristar um, in East Chicago. <laughs> By like six or seven hours in, everybody's quiet, listening to headphones, robots, you know, like sad and depressed. And, you know, everyone looks miserable. And like, that's how it kind of was. And that's what I was expecting in the WSOP. And that just was not what it was. That's We're awesome. on the bubble. People are playing bubble play and like squeezing people out of huge pots and like, putting people to the test for all their money on the bubble for 15,000. They're just like laughing and showing bluffs. And like, even though it was so serious, everybody was just like happy to be there. And that was really cool. I'm sure it's the same way at the masters. Everybody wants to win there. I mean, and it's nerve wracking on the back, back nine of, you know, 18 on Sunday and back nine on, on Sunday. And just like, I'm sure it's nerve wracking when they get down to the final eight tables. Right. But like the whole play leading up to it, people were just happy to be there. It's part of Can't the experience, wait. right? Like it's a, it's an it's an expensive ticket to go and and be part of an event because that the, any any poker tournament is an event in itself, right? Like you're going to get joy out of it. Most of us are playing it to say we played it, and and if we cash or min cash or do something or go deep in it, like it's just that's a bonus. I don't, and that's right. how I feel like people should approach it. But it's all the stuff leading up to it, right? Like being in line and seeing other people. And I mean, that's the fun part. And that's what people need to take joy in. And that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to. Um, it will be one of my goals to play again as well. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are, what I are like, it's amazing. are there any average Joe uh, or Jane, average Joe or Jane, average they? We do we say that? I'm not saying that. Average Joe type stuff that people should be thinking about? Like, you said specifically, like, I'm not going to play King Jack under the gun, blah, 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 blah. How, how I mean, do- I think that, you know, as much as there's so much poker content out there, find yeah. something that you can engage in or listen to or watch or, you know, take in some knowledge in some way and improve that way. I mean, that, that'd be a good step. If, if you've never consumed any poker content, go to Twitch. And it's fun. Watch the top guys. Watch Lex Veldhaus. Go pull up a range chart like you know don't have to study it for hours don't make it like right. school or college or take notes or just pull up a range chart to even see what it is right you, you know select the hands you think you play and then click enter and then i'll tell you the percentage and if that percentage is 40 percent, you're like yikes probably not too good and if that percentage is six percent probably like yikes maybe you guys should be playing this just like small little things there's not that many, I mean, going to like tournament poker hold'em, since I believe that probably a lot of our listeners are tournament hold'em players. For sure. You know, just like there's not that many hand combinations in hold'em. No. There's like, what, 352? I'm just making up the, the chart's not that big. And you yeah. can X out every two, three off, two, four off, two, five off, two, right. six off, two, seven off. No like, brainers, we call them. Gone. You don't have to worry and about you can those. Just concentrate yep. on this small little area and really pick apart. Within an hour, you know, obviously everyone's going to play aces, kings, and queens, and ace, kings, queens, and ace, queens. When you look at a poker range chart, you really discount the top and the bottom of the range because, in the sense of like, everybody knows you're going to play aces, and everybody knows you're going to fold seven deuce. So it's the middle stuff that you need to work right. on. It's the, it's the king, it's not queens, a big the king jacks, the king. Tax when is, is it appropriate small. to play those? When is it not appropriate to play those? Like, that's what's so much fun, and, and it's good. But it was funny. Uh, you had mentioned poker content, um, and not to change the subject, but it's 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 along the same lines. I was on Instagram, like reading like some kind of like uh, Instagram influencer. Um, he's out of Texas. He's pretty cool. I've seen him at Paramount a few times, um, and he's really grown exponentially. He went from like two k followers to like a hundred k on like Instagram or something. Uh, but anyways, they somebody had asked him in an interview, like Poker News, like, oh, you know. How did you learn how to play? What's your favorite poker book? And he gave like one of the best answers I've seen. He's like, I'm not, I, I don't read poker books. Like there are no poker books that you read because everything now is online content through YouTube or people's websites or things of that nature. Like there's so much free poker content. You don't really need a subscription to anything. You don't need to buy anything. You can just watch videos on YouTube and 
100% of the time, your play is going to improve. I don't care what you're watching. It doesn't matter. It's free, and there's no excuse not to do it. So everybody's one of everybody's goals to consume some kind of poker content between now and you know the end of the year. I, I think... And if, if you're one of those people, again, that doesn't want to, like, study poker, then don't. I, go to twitch.tv, download the app, go to the poker section, click on the – I don't even know who's there. I haven't, I haven't done it in a while. But Jamie I'm assuming Gold, not Jamie still, Gold, the Staple Brothers. The, yeah, Staple – Jamie Staples, he's still on there. They should, He chipped the tournament for 52000 and his buddy Kevin Martin, who he used to live with, got third in a tournament for 260000 on, like, uh, the 28th of December. Those guys are still on there. They, I see the Kevin Martin – Jamie Staples, Matt Staples, and Lex Veldhaus. You watch those four guys, they're entertaining. You can have them on in the background. You can That's put it I on like. your TV while you're cleaning. They <laughs> listen to music too, so it's not just like them talking. Right. But at the same time, they're going to give you an insight on what they're thinking and why. And why he's three bending ace, four of hearts on the button here. And he's going to say, well, this guy opens too wide, and this is a good hand to three bet bluff with. And then he'll say, you know, why he's continuing the sizing is just little tiny things that you can pick up on and apply. And that's the thing. It's almost subconsciously because he's just talking about it in the situation. And it's so hard. So that's why I think bad beat stories suck so much because they have to give you so much like set up to get to the scene of how your ace is lost that you end up losing the, you lose the audience before you get to the important part. Right. But like, if you're on the background, you're going and it's like, all right, well, this guy's raising again. Like it makes it simpler and it's easier. And it's almost like in the moment that you're like, Oh, that makes sense. I've never thought of it that way. And like, that's how it always dawns on me. And I was like, Oh, that's why he raised right. with this hand, or that's it's why a he play bet. by play, and you get to see it in yeah. front of your eyes. It's so natural and easy to learn. And if you enjoy the game of poker, watching poker, especially like on Twitch, I, I'm more of a fan of the vlog type stuff because I can just turn it on. And and again, I do. I watch Andrew Nemi and I watch Brett Owen. I love my boy Jamin. I like the way they talk, and they're they've got a style. And but they talk about the hands, and they don't make it so much about like, oh, this guy did all of this stuff before, which is why I did it. It's just more in the moment. You get used to it, and uh, I think you learn more from it that way. So much more yeah. than than trying to read a book on... It's hard for me when I was reading poker books in the early 2000s, right when like the poker boom was even kind of before it started. Um, it gets sucked. Trying to read yeah, them, no, like these I've pictures of hands, one. and it blows. I still have them. I, don't, I haven't read them in 15 years. Um. If anybody wants to, the first PLO book I actually read, it was 450 pages. It really does a good job of explaining. It's like 80% about pre-flop play, which is crazy because you think, oh, I always talk about PLO post-flop is such play. a flop game. Yep. Well, they teach you pre-flop and they teach you what wraps are good and how you want to have the space on the bottom of your hand instead of the top. You know, it's much better to have king, queen, jack, nine with the, the gap on the bottom than it is to have like queen 10, nine, eight with a gap on the top, like little stuff like that. You don't even think about it. You're like, Oh, queen 10, nine, eight. That's a great hand. Well, queen, jack, 10, eight, you know, with the space on the bottom is just such a better hand than that. And like, why? And like, which it's not about, you know, that your rat flops 12 outs. It's about that your rat flops 12 outs to the nuts. Right. And the difference in those hands and, you know, PLO quick book, PLO quick pro. It is like a $300 book, but if you're going to, if you ever want to play PLO and you're like, and I just don't even know how to segue into it. Buy the book, read that. Probably the best 300 you'll ever spend. Nice. That's what I lost. So there's that. I should have just but, done that. But I really, you probably should have just done that. But I really think that, you know, consuming poker content should be on everybody's poker okay. bucket list. And if you're beyond that and you say, well, you know, I need to be more in depth. Well, that's good. Then you, now you need to talk about range charts and range, you know, uh, calculators and solvers and you know uh, Jonathan Little and stuff that you're going to have to pay a membership for for ninety nine dollars a month or you know the whatever that that's really going to get you in depth and teach you the math and the GTO. If you're there, then take the next step and just do it. Trust me, nothing will make you do something like paying a hundred dollars a month. You see that thing whack out of your debit card? Yeah, it's true. You go to no, Chase, you see minus a hundred ninety nine hundred dollars, hundred six dollars ninety nine cents. You're like, shit, I got to log on here and learn something, right? I should use I this. My gym, my gym waxed me for sixty two dollars on the second of every month. I'm like, guess I gotta go to the gym this week. Yes, I, I better mean, do something with this. No, so yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's kind of if you if you're not in the body and if you're not ready to commit to changing your body and your mind and you want to change your poker game, 
just consume some sort of content that seems easy and doesn't seem like work. That's the important part. Try to make it fun. And I find watching videos, Twitch, on YouTube, where you're watching these really good players that are good. And you got to find a style that you like because some people who like watching Daniel Negreanu might not like watching Brad Owen because they talk about the game differently. Um, and I'm not going to say which way it is once. You're going to have to start watching on. But there are so many poker vloggers out there. I mean, we've had four of them, five of them, to come to CCG alone. We've had more come to Paramount. Same deal. Your your vibes, your Jamins, your Nimis, your Owens. I mean, all of those guys that come out and play. Uh, Mariano, uh, you know, they just come out and they have a very unique and, and fun way of storytelling their ideas of poker and kind of how it improves. And it's just, it's it's beneficial for everyone. So I think if everybody's yeah. out there trying to hit that poker reset button for 2022, make some resolutions, make some goals. It's really goals is what you're trying Stuff to do. Stuff you can stick to. Saying I want to win four bracelets, but then, you know, go into the World Series for a weekend, that's not attainable. Yeah. Saying I want to win $100,000, but then not doing anything about it, but driving to CCG or Paramount every Playing Friday. Playing 1-1 one, one, or 1-2, one, yeah, you're not going to win $100,000. It's not so possible. Pick the goals that are easy. Drink water, you know, <clears throat> walk, uh, watch Twitch in half hour before you go to sleep every night. Right. Replace playing video games with consuming some sort of content, you know, switch around your life and, you know, move, trade content, content for content. That's still like a net winner in your, in your life. It's not like you're adding anything extra, but you're just moving the, you know, moving the goalpost to a different, you know, area. I want to learn about poker now and not about, Halo 5 or whatever you're up playing. <laughs> Halo 5. The duty. Nice. So, well, that's going to no, do it for episode 59. I don't want them to go too terribly long. And, and, and no. the, uh, the idea yeah. of poker resolutions, hitting that poker reset button, just it's the beginning of the year. So everybody's thinking about goals and what do you want to happen for 2022? And it's such a unique and weird year now that we've poker community in general has been changed by the pandemic. Um, I think it's important to think about these things and, uh, you know, make, make poker fun again. Brandon, and I always yeah, joke, maybe, make, po- make poker great again. Maybe. Make poker fun. Make poker fun is what it should be. Poker is a fun game. Don't be so robotic. Enjoy it. Have a good time. Don't be a dick, but have fun. Make sure you come out and see us this coming Tuesday, January. What what date did I say it was, Brandon? I don't know. The 12th. It's 11th or 12th. It's the 11th, I think. Tuesday, the 11th, whatever that, that Tuesday is, the second Tuesday of January. Come out and see us. Hopefully, you're listening to this in real time so you can catch us this coming Tuesday in Paramount. Otherwise, you can always catch us in Chicago. We're at the CCG events all of the time uh, trying to flip our way into uh, fandom with all of our wonderful guests in general. So, thank you for listening. Check us out on Twitter at The Overlay Pod. Brandon, you got any words of wisdom to close out this, uh, you know, Poker yes. reset button in, in 22? Yes, poker reset button. Don't flip. I'm done flipping. Oh, what? Flipping. No. Anytime I flip, I got to pay you $100. Yeah, I do win a lot of flips. Uh, I, I My income would go down tremendously to the point of red flagging the IRS. Don't flip. Don't play blackjack. Drink water. Oh, that's my, goal. my God. That's the worst. My goals include flip more, play more table games, drink a Coke. But, but log, yeah, try logging your flips for a year and then, and then tell me. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Uh, I haven't flipped yet this year, so maybe I'll start a flip flip chart. Oh, my God, that'll be awful. Thanks for listening, everybody. (laughs) We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.